This is YBR with BeamNG Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at Update Alpha version 0.17.1. Except we aren't, but we are. For the most part, this update was all minor changes that I'm not going to talk about, except for one major change. The Grand Marshal has been completely revamped. So this new and improved Grand Marshal can be driven on any map. So I'm going to choose to drive it on West Coast USA. Because to me, this is the map that the Grand Marshal feels the most at home at. And when we go to the vehicle selector, you'll see there are some new variants available to us. We will be taking a look at those later on, but I want to start with a version you've all seen before, like the regular V8 version, because I want to show you the big difference between this version of the Grand Marshal and the previous version of it. Now, if you look at it from the outside, it really looks the same. There are no gigantic visual differences that would be like a significant change like I'm talking about. The significant change is actually not visible until you really crash the Grand Marshal. And I mean really crash it. Like we can go down this hole straight away as fast as we can, crash into the things at the end of it, and we might not be going fast enough. The only way to know for certain is to do a test. And the test is simple. Crash somewhere in this direction, see what happens. All right, there's a pretty big crash. And the question is, can you see the big change right now? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Or maybe you can see it, but it's not very obvious. So let's go ahead and reset this. Then we're going to get the node grabber, make it as strong as it can possibly go, grab the roof, and then do a little flicking maneuver like so. So what I have done is I have separated the body of the vehicle from the frame. Why did I do that? Because previously, you could not do that with the Grand Marshal. The Grand Marshal was supposed to be a body on frame vehicle much like the old Ford Crown Victoria, but it never actually was in the game. Now with this update, it's actually a body on frame sedan because the frame's over there and the body is over here. And you can barely tell what's what, to be honest with you, it's been so mangled by me removing it so violently, but that's the easiest way to demonstrate that fact, I think. So now let's go ahead and reset this and take a look at some of the new variants that are available to us. We're gonna do these in the order they appear. So the first one is The Miserable, and the description for this just says, it's bad, folks. That's all it says. And if you go to performance, it says propulsion is an internal combustion engine. Transmission is automatic. So I'm going to tell you right now that not all of the variants you are seeing are completed. This is definitely one of them. When it's actually completed, it'll have the stats just like all the other vehicles, I assume. But for now, it's a little bit of a work in progress. I have to do a little research to figure out what the configuration of the vehicle was. And by research, I mean, I looked at it. And when I looked at it, I was like, wow, that thing is wow. It's bad, folks. That's all I can say about it. So on the back, we're missing the taillights. We're missing the bumper. We got a metal bar in place of the bumper. Over here, we're missing all of the windows, every single one of them, except for the windshield, which is so clean. It's kind of funny. Like, the rest of the car is filthy and rusted out, just disgusting looking. And then there's the windshield, shiny as can be. Actually, kind of funnily, if you get it at the right angle, you can see the paint job actually kind of looks shiny as well. Like, right here, you can pretty easily see the reflections of things in the vehicle. You just gotta get the right camera angle and say, like, wow, that's actually cleaner than my car in real life. Why is that? But anyways, yeah, this used to be a police car and it isn't anymore. It also has the hood exit exhaust. And I kinda like the way this one is. It's different than the ones you see on like the banger version of the uh, Moonhawk because it doesn't have six separate exhausts. This one just has two, one for each side of the V8 engine. And I think I like it a little bit better when you have two big exhausts going through the hood instead of six small ones. So on the front, we do have a bumper bar there. Once again, though, the bumper is completely removed, just like the rear. So to have as much fun as possible with a vehicle like this, we need some traffic. This will make it a lot easier to test how strong the bumper bar is on this vehicle. But before we do that, how about just a little bit of driving? Because this thing does have a surprising amount of performance behind it. Because again, it just looks like a complete piece of junk but it still has the V8 engine of the regular police vehicle, and it actually has some weight reduction, I'm pretty sure, with all those parts missing, so it can move. Like, we got up to about 100 miles per hour going through there faster than the regular V8 did. All right, all these cars here would be a good place to crash, but no, not yet. I want to have a big crash. All right, we're going to go full speed here, hope a car crosses in front of me. I see a car in the distance crossing across. We just got to get one timed right. Nope, not going to make it, not going to make it. All right, that unfortunately did not work. So we'll have to go to the backup plan, which is just keep driving around until I see another car and then we slam into them. 
So instead of doing the big crash now, maybe we'll do a small crash. I don't really care. We're going to do both. I'll tell you that much now. The order, not really important to me. I just want to make sure I get a little bit of both. I should also mention, the handling on this is fine. It doesn't feel like it has a blown out suspension or anything. Maybe it will in the future, but right now it feels fine. So first target acquired, four times slow-mo, and there is a nice little bash. I think my car should be fully drivable, and there's, well, it'll probably be drivable too because the front wheel drives it. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. How did they do that? That guy actually managed to somehow pull a pit maneuver on me. He hit me right in the back corner, which is just a perfect pit maneuver. He couldn't have done it better if he was trying, to be honest, because there was no way I was saving that without doing a little 360 like I just did. But right now, this thing seems like it's still driving pretty straight. In fact, scratch that. I would say it's driving perfectly straight still, even after that first impact. So let's go for round two on this car in front of us. Boom. How is it going to drive after that? The radiator is leaking. That's a little bit concerning. Get around all the traffic and uh, maybe just a little bump on him accidentally. So right now, how's it doing? It still looks almost perfectly straight. It might have the tiniest amount of pull, and that's going to definitely have some pull. I hit that corner really awkwardly. Uh, yeah, now it has a little bit of pull to the side, but still it's going mostly straight and it's very easy to control. Oh, almost crashed into that guy. How about we crash into this guy on purpose? I think that's going to actually destroy the vehicle. The tire is flat and we are stuck. So I think it's time to just reset this. And now we're going to try to do the big crash. The main thing here is to crash into a car going the opposite direction over highway speeds. We're already over highway speeds. So the first car I see can be crashed into, but I want a good angle as well. So 90-ish miles per hour into a, another Grand Marshal. That's perfect. Oh, well, not exactly perfect. I ended up rolling on top of them a little bit, so it wasn't a true impact. It was an interesting looking crash, just not the impact I was looking for. Are we gonna land on our wheels? Uh, not quite. We are still stuck on our side. So we'll do this one more time, and hopefully this time, we're not flying through the air as we make the impact. Maybe we'll go a little bit slower, so only about 60 miles per hour, just into this guy. He's nice and easy to hit. It's gonna work good, 70 miles per hour actually, and then boom, dead on collision. Does my vehicle still drive afterward? Let's find out, real time. And uh oh, it looks like we might be a little stuck together. Let's see, can I back off of them? Now we are stuck, so I'm gonna go ahead and save the vehicle, and then we can reset it, load it back up, and see how well does it drive. The answer is perfectly straight? After a crash into another vehicle going directly into each other at about 70 miles per hour, it still drives straight. So that is a nice bar it has attached. It has some good durability to it. So let's go for another round into the little pickle, smashing him into the air. Oh no, smashing myself into the air. Oh, I gotta save this somehow. Come on. Oh, that was so good. Like that's why I was in such a rush. I had to get to the emergency room, right? No, but actually, the way I managed to not crash after I hit the pickle, I am really proud of. So pickle, he's pretty much ruined, I think, but I'm still driving. It's not driving good, but it is driving. And now it's no longer driving. And that yellow car, he actually smashed right into me. But it'll still drive, but it's not going to drive too well at this point. And we have another vehicle stuck to us, so I'm going to go ahead and call it quits with this version of the vehicle. So I'll freshen it up and then go to the next one in the list, which is the fleet. So it says debatched fleet models sold in bulk and ready for painting. And boy, is it boring. And really, there's not much to say about this version. Just like the text said, there's no badging on the rear. It has different wheels than the regular V8, but it does have the badging on the front. And otherwise, though, it's pretty much the same as the normal V8 version. So that's that. Let's go ahead and go on to the next new version, which is going to be the street tuned edition. And this is where things start to get interesting because look at these stats 583 foot pounds of torque and about 500 horsepower tuned for street racing and cruising down the highway with an upgraded engine sports suspension and mag wheels and there are some visual differences as well with this version i'm gonna go over those later on right now let's focus on the performance which means we're already going 70 miles per hour and 80 miles per hour but from here on out it's not exactly a reliable measurement because we're bouncing all over the place, but I think we get over 100 before the jump. Get about 105 before the jump, and wow, that's way too fast. What am I doing? Save me, ETK. 
That's how you use another car to get around the corner. Just smash into them just like that. Oh, look at that bumper. How in the world is that bumper holding on? I got an idea. It's just a theory. But somebody put a small piece of double stick tape on the rear of the bumper. And that's how it's staying on. I'm sure the second we hit a bump, like right here, it's going to fall off, isn't it? Oh, it actually held. That is really strong tape, man. Oh, there it goes. Well, it was strong tape, but it wasn't strong enough. Also, I should mention, even after we crashed into that car, this thing is still driving straight. Like, all I really did was bash in the body panels. That might be an advantage of the realistic body on frame construction, or I might have just got lucky. Can't say exactly which it is, but we're gonna fly and then we're gonna crash. There's no way I can recover this. Oh, we got a nice little spin going. Oh. You know, just for a split second, I thought maybe I could recover it. Yeah, it's not going to get recovered. So here's a quick look at the damage before we reset. Now, I know the vehicle stats said it had 500 horsepower-ish, but it didn't feel like it had that much power. So I'm going to do a little test. I'm going to go to the UI apps menu, and we're going to find the one that shows you the torque curve of the vehicle, and we'll stick it down here, and then we're just going to see how much power does it make. So right now it's 18 horsepower. What does it make at its peak? Look like about 340, 350 maybe? Yeah, so it still has more power than the normal Grand Marshal, no doubt about that, but it doesn't have the power that it's promised. So either the stats were just copied from another of the Grand Marshals because there are other ones that have those stats, or it doesn't have the correct engine upgrades equipped for when it's finalized. Again, these are work in progress versions of the vehicles. So we'll go ahead and bring it back in the now for the visual differences. First off, we have the rear spoiler right there. It's just a very, very small spoiler. It's nice and cute. It actually fits the vehicle really well. I think it's supposed to be a stock spoiler and not an aftermarket one because it just fits too well. And then going over on the front, you'll notice the front looks completely different. Look at that. It's so aggressive looking. It's got a little scoop on the hood. It's got all this breathing room in the front so you can really cool the engine off. It's got a little front lip spoiler on it. The extra blinkers have been removed. It just looks mean. But now it's time to move on to the next version we're going to be taking a look at. And that one is the Drift Missile, which has been modified a little bit. There was a Drift Missile version before, but now it has a different hood on it. At least I'm pretty sure that's a different hood because I don't remember it having that. Otherwise, it looks pretty much the same as it was before. You can drive it around a little bit. Now, this one actually makes probably about 500 horsepower because it does feel faster than the previous one. And we are going about 100 miles per hour already, even with the bumps. 115 before the jump, and there is no way we can save this. So just let it crash. It's bouncing all over the place because it's a drift suspension. And I nailed it. That is exactly how I was trying to park the vehicle. Anyways, reset time. And we'll go ahead and move on to the next one because you have already seen the drift missile before. It's just been modified a little bit, I think. So next, we're going to go to the V8 road sport and the road sport is gravel's factory supercharged performance model so according to the stats here it does in fact have an engine that makes some power if i had to guess it's a little bit more than the street tuned we were driving before the difference though is how it makes its power it's a supercharged engine where the other one was a naturally aspirated one and with the supercharged it just feels a little bit more torquier especially off the line it feels like it just has a good bit more torque but horsepower is probably about maybe 370 i would guess and just having a little bit of fun here going through that jump area. It's fun driving through here with all the traffic. That's the one thing I'm noticing. Before, I would drive one road once and I wouldn't want to drive it again. Now it's like, I'll drive the same road a dozen times because the traffic makes it feel different every time. Like right now, I'm just going to bash in all the traffic a little bit because why not? It's a good way to crash test the vehicle. Just hit every car. Like there's a car, we're going to hit him too. Yeah, there's another car. All right, we're going to hit him. Oh, he's going to spin me out actually. Power. Power is always the solution when you start to spin out because you can do a little donut and keep on moving. All right, next car I see, big impact. We're going to be going at least 70 miles per hour, hopefully. There we go. And boom. That is a nice impact. Can we drive it all? Maybe. We're kind of stuck on them, so not exactly. Although one thing that's kind of cool, if you look through the hood on this vehicle, you can actually see the supercharger right there. So it is equipped and visible. And I think with these cosmetic upgrades, such as the spoiler, and the engine upgrades, we can go fast enough where we can actually separate the frame of the vehicle from the body with a normal collision. Like, say normal, but you gotta plan it out. You gotta, like, clip something just barely. There we go. 
So there's the frame, and there, there, there goes the body. It is off on an adventure. Wow, it really got going. Anyhow, on to the next variant. This one is the lowrider, and it says the cop who bought. And the Grand Marshal Lowrider has the same controls as the Blue Buck Lowrider, but one thing I noticed is it seems like it's more willing to really start hopping. Like, if I just do a couple of hops in a row, we can actually get some airtime where I couldn't seem to do that as easily with the Blue Buck. It just feels like this vehicle's more well suited for bouncing all over the place compared to the other one. Or maybe I just got better at this and know how to time it better. I'm not really sure, but yeah, hydraulics work fine. They work just like the ones in the Blue Buck, the same design and all that. And one thing that's always fun to do is whenever you go around the corners, you also hydraulics. So it looks like you're really dipping hard as you corner. Although in reality, I think that just makes it handle worse because it just kind of like skitters and slides a little bit more when you do that. So let's see, going around the corner normally. And then, yeah, you see how it just kind of bounces and stuff? I think it makes it worse. Someday we'll actually do a test where we really see if it makes it better or worse. And there's also the opposite where you, you go the opposite direction the way you're steering, which really makes that thing want to oversteer. Wow. Yeah, we gotta do some more testing someday and really figure out how you can abuse the lowrider system to try to make it corner even faster than normal. I don't think it'll actually be possible, but it's something you gotta test. And, you know, the worst way to corner, the very, very worst way is you just made corner your car hops a little bit. That'll mess you up every time. Like I thought it was gonna mess me up more. So it didn't mess me up as much as I expected, which messed me up even more. How confusing is that? So anyways, we're making our way over to the drag strip so we can do a little bit of drag racing with the drag version. And uh, we're right in the middle of drag strip. This is totally the correct way to enter the drag strip, guys. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional drag racer. That guy isn't. He doesn't know which way to go. All right, so if we pull up here, it should come up with the screen. There we go. I will accept the drag race. They will use just a regular drag vehicle like the Barstow. And then for me, I will use the drag version of this car. If I can uh, get to it in time. Oh, no, there's all these other cars in the way. Hold on, hold on. Let me find it. There it is. So we'll swap it for the Grand Marshal drag version, which is faster than any police department, which is good. I like it that way. <laughs> I got the AI still going. They're just, yeah, they don't get, they don't get it. They just do not get what's going on here. This is a drag strip, you fools! Oh my goodness, it's gonna be chaos! You almost get, you're gonna give me a false start. All right, I'm staged up. Go! So how fast is the drag grand marshal compared to the other drag cars? I know the AI is always a little bit slower than me, so I would expect to be, oh, they're not even there. Okay, well, they got messed up because of the traffic, so that's great. We'll have to try that again, but first, Watch this, in between those two cars. Whoosh! Ooh! That was really good! I, I was, I am impressed with that. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and turn off the traffic. And then we gotta enable the race again. So let's back up and go forward a little bit. No, that's not quite right. Maybe I have to back up a little bit more. Now, oh, there it is, stop, stop, stop. Okay, now we accept and start. And this will hopefully answer the question. Is it competitive with the other vehicles? I think it should be. And we even got nitrous. I didn't use it last time, but we're gonna use it this time. Make sure it's as competitive as it can be. If I beat them, it's competitive. If I lose to them, it's not competitive. That's the way it's gonna work. Their engine does sound more aggressive as they pull up. Here we go. Launching and um, I don't see them. I think I am competitive and a little bit faster. Although, like I said, I'm always a little bit faster than them at the drag strip. My time is a mystery. I don't even know how long it took me, but they were a little bit behind me, maybe like a half second or so. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now we can go ahead and go to the final version of the Grand Marshal we're gonna be taking a look at, and this is gonna be the track version. Equipped with a powerful supercharged V8, custom 18 inch wheels and racing equipment. So what exactly is racing equipment? It's a big wing and a roll cage and then a slightly bigger hood, and then again, the extra enhanced cooling capabilities, and you also got that front lip spoiler as well. Oh, that makes it more well-suited for a track. So let's go make our way over to the track. It's a little bit of a drive, but this is a car made to go fast, so it shouldn't take us that long to get there. I mean, we're already going 
112, 120 miles per hour. Yeah, we're moving fine. And actually, at this point in time, we are on the track. We're just kind of cutting through the corners a little bit. But right here, if we take a left, we're on the track normally. And ooh! All right, one thing we do got to watch out for with this one is when you brake too hard, the back ends are going to kick out. So you got to be real careful when you're braking. If you lock them up, they're gone. This is one of those cars where I would gladly take ABS. Like a lot of games where I'm having a, a race car, I'll go without ABS. Because if I lock up the brakes, it's not too detrimental. I just let up a little bit. But this one, it feels like you lock up the brakes, it starts to kick a little too hard. Well, it just likes to kick a lot. It's a fun car to drive, but it is a little twitchy. So you just gotta be on it as you drive it. You'll do fine. Or just be like me, be a little bit extra careful. you also do fine. That's the easiest way to do it. Instead of having perfect driving, just be careful. I mean, nobody's timing me. Who cares if I'm three seconds slower than the pace or whatever? As long as it looks like I'm going at a decent speed, we're good. So anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. As I said in this update, there are a lot of small minor changes as well, but I didn't feel like covering those because they're all just minor things compared to the changes to the Grand Marshal, and I want to make that the focus of the video. So until next time, this is YBR, and remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by the number of new Grand Marshals in every update. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.